Hey everybody, MS Farzan here, and welcome back to this video series on how to build a multiplayer card game using Phaser 3, Express, and Socket.io. In this video, we're going to add a tiny little feature that's going to help with the quality of life of this app, or at least in using this app, in that right now when we're playing the game, we can see the cards rendered on screen, but especially, I mean, on my screen, I can barely see the text and uh, probably the same on yours. Um, and if we're talking about a mobile app, well, that's going to be even, um, even worse. So we're going to add a feature where when you mouse over uh, the uh, whatever card, you'll be able to have a larger preview of it and make it easier to read. This is actually going to be pretty simple to implement. We're going to go into our interactive handler. Right at the top of our code here, we're going to say within the constructor, we're going to um, write a declaration that scene.cardPreview equals null. So it's just going to be a, a, a null game object, uh, well, a null variable to start. And then we're um, just to keep everything clean and kind of together, we'll skip through the deal cards code. And below this, we'll say scene.input.on pointer over. This is we're using phasers um, uh, input system for this, comma event, comma game objects. And this will be a, an arrow function. We'll say let pointer equal scene dot input dot active pointer. Just part of the what what you need to type for um, for phaser to pick up on what you're asking. Now we have to to uh, write a little check here, and we'll say if game objects um, zero dot type equals image and game objects zero dot data dot list dot name does not equal card back and then something. So basically we're saying the the game object that's at the very top of uh, the list, which is going to be whatever's being um, uh, uh, focused on at that moment by the by the pointer by the mouse if the type is image meaning that it's not um, you know this text is a game object but it's not an image type and we don't want when the mouse to go over it we, when the mouse um, when the pointer goes over this we don't want the deal cards uh, text even though it's a game object we don't want it to be um, blown up to a larger size we just want it to happen with images here you might have to configure this differently based on um, how your app works and also whatever the game object is um, uh, when we instantiate the object or when we create the object we um, uh, give them names based on the names of the cards and we want to make sure that we're not zooming over a card back because these card backs here we don't want this like when my mouse goes over this my opponent cards I don't want to to zoom in on that there that, uh, at least in this case there's no sense in that for me so what we're gonna do we're gonna say scene dot card preview the empty variable we have up at the top of our code equals scene dot add dot image and where are we going to add it? Well, the x and y coordinates are going to be at pointer dot world x pointer dot world y. And what do we want? What kind of image do we want to add? Well, we want to add game objects zero dot data dot values dot sprite. and set the scale to 0.5 and 0.5. So there's a few different ways of doing this, but this is the one, this is one way that I found it to be um, kind of the easiest. We'll just say that when, uh, we, when we mouse over a card that's not a card back, we want uh, to add an image um, right where the uh, pointer is and have it be 
have the image sprite be the same as the what we've written um, as the the sprite for the game objects um, uh, in the game objects data values, which happens here. You might recall when we um, create a card, we um, when we pass in the sprite name, we also store that in the data, and that's the reason why. There's another way of um, kind of accessing this information. We'll take a look at that at the end of this video. Where was I? Interactive handler. Okay, so that's when the pointer goes over. Um, we also want to see what happens when, the, we don't want that to just exist forever, so we'll write another little code block and say scene.input.on pointer out. Event game objects. I have a similar uh, check here. We'll say if game objects zero dot type equals image and game objects zero dot data dot list dot name does not equal card back. dot card preview dot set visible false just turn off the uh, turn off the card preview or at least the visibility of it so it's not there like forever what have I done wrong here oh, I don't need this Okay, great. So that's basically how it's gonna gonna work. Um, there's one other uh, component to this, and you know we m might as well um, uh, take a look at it together. Um, simply because there's a there's a point at which we might run into a little bit of trouble. So th this should look all well and good. We can actually you know test it right now. Um, we know which uh, which person is the player one or player A, as I've been saying. So that person is going to go first, and then check this out. Now, when I go over each one of these cards, I see a larger version of it, which is really cool. And I've set this to to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, because when we when we um, the cards that I have are quite large, so when we uh, um, create them we set the scale to 0.25 of their original size if you have a different size card you know um, in terms of the resolution you might have to change this around um, and importantly when I hover over the backs of these other cards I don't you know have the same uh, functionality which is good I don't want that and the same is true on the on player B's uh, cards so and then player A plays a card and we see that the the card preview is still there, even though it's working well when I when I um, mouse over and mouse out. When I mouse over and click, I'm still technically moused over the thing, and it just looks weird. So we're just going to add one line here uh, during the drag start. Why am I in the socket handler? Um, during the drag start. So when we say um, uh, game object set tint bring to top that's when we're going to say scene dot card preview dot set visible and false just turn turn that off for us save that everything re-renders I hit deal cards I hit deal cards now we're ready to play and this time player B is player A or whatever um, so I'm I hover over these I can see my cards I play my boolean and and as I drag you see the the card preview disappears I drop that in the drop zone and now I can look at it again and you might have to do some work to to fix the bounds of this so like you see if I kind of like put my pointer over to the right side I see the boolean card just fine but if it's on the left side it kind of goes off screen so you might have to do a little bit of finagling to make sure that depending on the the um, the 
coordinates of the uh, pointer in the world space, you know, you might have to make it render to the right or um, sometimes this can go off the screen so it might have to render a little bit higher. Um, and uh, what's cool is that even though this is the other player's card, I can still mouse over it, see what it was. And everything, everything still works the way that it's supposed to. Cool. So that's that. Um, there's one more little tidbit that I'd like to share with you before we um, uh, talk about deployment. And um, this is in regards to the card handler class that we've never really done anything with. And in a previous version of this game, I had, um, or this prototype or whatever, um, I had a, a card flipper um, where like, you know, if you, um, I think it was like when um, the cards would exist on, already exist on screen, but you'd just be seeing the backs of them rather than the um, actual, uh, than, rather than just the card, uh, having a card back image. Like the image, mm, how do you say this? The The clients would, both clients would know what cards were on the screen. So like um, right now, uh, supposedly this client doesn't know anything about what these cards are, which isn't exactly true because we've passed them the name and we could, we could um, uh, in, in this uh, line of code where we say in the, um, in the server, in the server, when we um, deal cards, we just deal the cards and then the, uh, the, both clients receive the information about the cards and uh, these cards right here and determine if their socket ID isn't the right one, um, then they don't render them. They just render the backs of the cards. That could be kind of like a security loop um, a loophole. Like if uh, somebody's you know really savvy, they could receive that information about the cards and then you know use that to manipulate or, or, or just view them and know, oh, this is the, these are the cards that were sent to the other player. So you'd kind of have to work that out and make sure that that doesn't happen and, and handle this differently. Um, but in any case, um, uh, the the cards that are rendered on screen are just the backs of the cards. Uh, and so um, uh, in a previous version, um, I would actually have the physical card. So like um, uh, these cards on player B's area, they would actually be here, but we would just have rendered the, the backs of the sprites instead. Right now, these are just images of, of you know, uh, the backs of cards. And so if you wanted to do something where you could like flip the cards um, as they're rendered or like maybe you use phaser system to shift click a card to flip it, you could do something like, and I should, this is a heavy caveat that I haven't um, done this myself, but I wanted to provide the information for you to, to follow up on if you'd like to. Um, the, way, the way that I found to access the, the correct information, I would say something like, um, if I needed a, a flip card uh, uh, method or, or function, I would say this dot flip card, and I would take a card. I would say, oops. I would say if card dot data dot values dot type is a if it's a player card because we save that when we when we create the card and then if card dot texture dot key is cyan card back card dot set texture card dot data dot values dot sprite else card dot set texture cyan card back so we're basically just saying that like when if somebody let's say shift clicked on a card if the card, uh, um, the type that we saved when we created the card is a player card, then let's just see if the the the, the um, key of the texture um, that Phaser has assigned it uh, is cyan card back. That's way back here in the um, the game handler. 
uh, not game handler, I'm sorry, the game scene, where we say, where we load an image of the cyancardback.png and we give it a name, cyancardback. And if it's a cyan card back, then set then actually set its texture to whatever sprite we have said the name of the the card should be um, when we create it. Otherwise, that if it's not, that means that it that we're looking at the front of the card. So set the texture to the cyan card back. And then else if card dot data dot values dot type is equal to magenta. Oops, sorry opponent card back opponent card if card dot texture dot key is magenta card back card dot set texture card dot data dot values dot sprite otherwise card dot set texture magenta card back so this is like the kind of situation where you can shift click your own card um, if it's blue uh, well it'll be blue so you you know switch it up if you shift click the, your opponent's card and it you're allowed to flip it then that will happen so like I said I haven't um, tested this in this current environment and you probably will have to do something like Actually, you shift click a card, it sends a message through Socket.io to the server, and then the server determines whether or not you can flip the card, and then it sends back a message, and then this happens. So th there's there's some work to be done here, but here's kind of how I would approach it. Um, and then your card handler could do other things uh, with the card, like if you need to flip it sideways, or I, I don't know, deactivate a card or whatever, you could, you could handle all that in here. Cool. So uh, that's about it for, for this. Um, this episode, uh, and we're pretty much done with the, the main functionality of the app, what we'll look at in the next video is some options for um, how to configure your uh, app for deployment. I hope this video has been helpful for you, and if it has, please be sure to uh, like it and, f and subscribe to my channel for more. You can also follow me on Twitter, and I'd love for you to check out my books and games at nightpathpub.com, and we'll see you soon.